Hello, my name is Pastor Timothy Witherspoon from Kingdom Life Christian Church. Welcome to Choose Life. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about mm, idolatry, idolatry. And so this is a word that a lot of times when we think about idolatry, we often think about serving other gods, um, allowing other things to become our God. I have a few scriptures that I wanted to share with you concerning idolatry, where sometimes it's not always a person, but it can be a thing. It also could be a thought. Yes. So if you would come with me on this journey, I want you to see how together um, as we study the scriptures, we can search ourselves. We can search uh, our inner parts to really determine where we are with it. And hopefully the people of God, you have separated yourself as the Bible calls us to be. But maybe there are some things that are lingering in your life that you don't even know about that you may have put in the place where only God should be. Okay, so let's go. Um, we got a few minutes here, so let's go into the word of God. The first scripture I would like to, to bring up in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says, if you have it, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and I'm going to read it from the NIV version. It says, mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, hmm, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And here's one. Verse five says, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, having nothing. It says, have nothing to do with such people. Wow. Wow. Let me um, just make a quick point here. There's a difference between sin and in idolatry, falling into sin, or actual, the act of a, a sin in idolatry. Idolatry is sin. But for example, let me give you an example. When you make a mistake and you step on somebody's toe, okay, that was a sin. You offended somebody. So you go back and you say you're sorry. But you don't go around stepping on people's toes as a lifestyle or a form of living. That's what would be the difference between sin and idolatry. Idolatry is you now taking a, an, an opinion outside of God's truth and making it into a lifestyle. Okay? So, for example someone who may have been addicted to drugs at one time or may have tried one, one time. Being addicted to drugs would be a form of idolatry. Being trying drugs would be a sin, okay? That would be a sin. So here in 2 Timothy um, chapter 3, starting at verse 1 through 5, Everything that is listed here will be considered idolatry. No, this is not my opinion. This is what the word of God says. Why is that so? It's because these people that the Bible is talking about, both saved and unsaved, these people 
are forming and have formed a lifestyle that goes against the word of God. And it says, it lists all the different things and it, it even goes on to say, one, one of the, the in verse five, it says, having a form of godliness. So that's talking about some of our church people. Yes, some of our church people. And I'd like to talk about that for a second. Can you imagine serving God, saying that you love God, but there not being any kind of proof in your life that you are sold out to doing God's will, sold out to living sanctified, sold out to being holy. It's like planting a fruit tree in your yard and watering it and uh, giving it the proper nourishment that it needs, fertilizing it, watching it grow, bigger in stature, but never ever getting any real fruit from it. And that's what a lot of people are having problems with in the body of Christ, not seeing any fruit from their so-called relationship with God. There's one, uh, there's a time in your life when you are getting to know God and there's a time of infancy when uh, things might not be so clear to you and the Bible might not be um, uh, um, very um, comprehensive to you. But there also comes a time when you have to keep seeking after God, pushing after that which is holy in order to see the fruit produced in your life. So God says it like this, just taste and see how good I am. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to give this to you on credit. I'm going to give you a freebie. I'm going to forgive you of all of your sins, past, present, and future. I'm going to set you up to succeed from the very beginning. Just taste and see that the Lord is good. But once you come in, you have to sell out. Once you come in, you have to sanctify yourself. Once you come in to the family of God, God expects for you to do a work, to become a servant of God, as well as being a son of God. Are you hearing me? He expects you to produce on all that he has given you. Every talent, every gift every good idea, your time, your finances, your energy. God is expecting a return on all of those things that he has given you. Why? Because he desires to see fruit. He, say, he says it like this in the book of John. He said, I get joy. I'm glorified when you get joy. Are you hearing me? When you produce fruit, that's how God gets glory. And you say, what does this have to do with idolatry? Because when we are not producing fruit, it means that we are not worshiping, not serving, not respecting the authority of God. God is a proven individual. He is a man that he cannot lie. So if he says you're blessed, you're blessed. But if your lifestyle shows otherwise, then there is something clogging up the blessing, something that is causing the flow of God to be redirected, to be stopped in your life. And most of the times, or it was those things that we hold secret, in secrecy. And those things are idols. Those things couldn't be people that we cherish more than God. That's right. It could be a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It could be a child. It could even be your spouse, your husband, or your wife. It could be your boss. It could be your pastor, okay? And then there are 
things, things that we do. I know people who will who will come to church faithfully until uh, their favorite sports comes on or until uh, their child has to go and, and play sports. And they will leave everything thinking that it's okay to walk away from the gospel of Jesus Christ for this, that, and the third things that get in the way. Okay. And then there are here, and here's what a lot of times we suffer with in the body of Christ. There are thoughts mm -hmm, that we live by. Rules that traditions that become idols in our life. Things that are not necessarily the truth, but things that we believe. Well, what's a good example of that? Well, I know sometimes in 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 the in in the church, uh, well, here's a good example. I was talking to a young man the other day, and uh, he's not so young, he's actually over 60. And he said to me, I just don't believe in such and such and such. And I'm, I, I'm just who I am. I'm, and I'm going to stay that way no matter what. I was like, huh. boy, you actually said that out loud. And it amazes me how people refuse to move off of their own thinking to take in God's truth. Now you are setting yourself up, your truth, your own lifestyle as an idol against the most high God. Let me read some more of the scripture to you. Uh, I want to show you something else in the scripture. In Colossians chapter three, verse one, it says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden in Christ in God. Your life is no longer your own. Now your life is hidden in Christ Jesus, meaning that. Whatever I used to be or whatever I used to think, it now comes under the authority and the lordship of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For you die and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your, is your life, appears, then you also will, will appear with him in glory. Now listen to this, verse 5. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. Verse 7 says, you used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of who of, of, of its creator, which is Jesus Christ. What is that saying? In my last minute, I would just like to say this, that everything that we do, everything that we breathe in and breathe out, it must now come under the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we put what we think, what, we, what our opinions are above the truth of the word of God, then we become our own idol and it must be torn down. It must be dealt with. You must put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's the reason why in Ephesians 4 it says, I've given you people to help you out as a gift. 
I've given you pastors and, and evangelists and prophets and apostles and teachers to help you, to help you make your life perfect. So if you're not sure about some things, and if you're not sure about um, uh, 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 where you stand as far as living a righteous lifestyle, go to your pastors and your leaders. Reach out to Choose Life Ministries and see if you could talk and actually be honest about where you are and let someone help you to figure out what's next and what's best for you. God bless you and thank you for listening. I'm Pastor Tim Witherspoon and I appreciate it if you would choose life. Thank you.